What's going on, everybody? Hey guys. Welcome back to East Africa with Willie and Rachel. We're super excited to be sitting with you again. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So today we're continuing to talk about love, the aspects of love, the the fact that the love of God, God desires for you to understand his love to where that it rebounds yeah. and you start being able to show that love to other people and walk in power mm -hmm. in your life. Like Ephesians 3.19 says, you'll be filled with all the fullness of God when we truly start to understand Absolutely. this love and have a working knowledge of it. Praise God. So today we're going to be reading from 1 John chapter 4 and I'm going to start in verse 17 read verse 18 also. It says, love has been perfected among us in this. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because mm -hmm. as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out mm -hmm. fear. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in, in love. love. This is really powerful because there is almost... Okay, what Satan comes to do, let's start there, is the fact that he comes to twist, right? Mm -hmm. When he came to Jesus and he quoted a scripture and then when he was when he came to Adam and Eve you can just look at the temptation he does when someone is committed to serving God he doesn't come and say there is no God anymore when someone's born again he's not saying oh there is no God that's not his main temptation to you right now it might be his main temptation to someone who is already denied the Lord or, uh -huh. or someone who is not walking in relationship with God but to you, the first thing he's going to do is try to twist scripture. Mm -hmm. If he's going to get you ever to deny who God, he's going to have to get you to, to start twisting scripture in the first place. That's what he did to Adam and Eve. Right. That's what he did. He, he came and said, eat of this fruit and then you'll be like God. They were already like God. They were already created in the image of God. They didn't need that temptation. didn't even make sense no. if they were honoring the word. And see, this says that love and torment, mm -hmm. Rachel, love and fear are exactly opposites right. of each other. And... There are too many believers who are embracing torment. They're embracing fear rather than rejecting fear. Yeah. Rejecting torment and seeing that torment, that fear brings mm -hmm. torment. Fear and love are opposites of each yeah. other. And if you have fear in your life, this says that you've not been made perfect in love. That's not to condemn you, but it's to show you that, wow, I need to stand up. Mm -hmm. I need to start resisting the devil. And when I hear doctrines about God saying yeah. that, like, maybe he's hurting me or doing something. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's untrustworthy. You mm -hmm. never know what God's going to do. These types of sayings. I need to start opening my mouth and rejecting them. Yeah, absolutely. Because they're bringing fear upon me. And how mm -hmm. could I ever, if fear and love are opposites of one another, yeah. how in the world would I, could I be allowing the love of God to do such a thing mm -hmm. in me to where I'm being filled with all the fullness of God if I'm accepting fear thoughts? Right. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. If, if I'm having torment in my life of, of offense, of things where I'm constantly worried about other mm -hmm. people and how what other people are doing in their life mm -hmm. and it's affecting how I live my life, I'm going to stand up and start rejecting these things. Yep. When I start having the emotion of fear, torment, death, like all these thoughts and stuff like that, I have to actively stand yeah. up and start saying no. It says, Absolutely. it says in James chapter 4, resist the devil and he will flee from you. We have to begin to say that, wait a second, I'm going to set fear over here. I'm going to set torment over here and I'm going to set mm -hmm. love over here and start viewing, dividing yeah. and seeing they are opposites of one another. And I'm going to focus on love and I'm not going to focus on the things that are bringing fear in my life. I'm going to reject mm -hmm. them. You know, Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief mm -hmm. comes to steal, kill and destroy. Mm -hmm. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. And yet there's probably whenever I meet, a, whenever I start, well, we start ministering to a new group of, group of pastors. So say we're sitting with 20 pastors, they start coming to a Bible training center. The majority will be embracing as I start talking mm -hmm. to them and we start ministering to them, we'll be embracing things that Jesus said specifically, like in John 10, 10, that, that the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. They will be embracing yeah. destruction right. in their life. And saying, even making doctrines about it, saying that it's God. And where you do that, it is a huge hindrance, isn't it, Rachel? It's not even a hindrance. To, to understanding who God is. It's a total blockade. It, and in, mm -hmm. in fact, the fact that so many Christians mm -hmm. use this type of doctrine mm -hmm. regularly yeah. is shocking. Yeah. It actually makes no sense. Mm -mm. It's not biblical. And I liken it to the fact that fear in a relationship... 
is very unhealthy. Yeah. If I was just afraid of you. Yeah. Oh man. So if I had somebody and I've uh, known some people in abusive relationships, but physically, emotionally, whatever, one of the people, whoever is on the other side of the abuse is constantly walking on eggshells, constantly in fear, constantly timid constantly unsure of mm-hmm. what that person might do. That's so good, yeah. There's no trust in that relationship. Mm-hmm. It's very abusive and very dangerous. And I would never like be like, oh, you should just stay in that and just endure that all the time. Be like, you need to be, you know, getting help yeah. or taking steps Counsel, in a different direction. Yeah. Whatever needs to happen there. But people often make God the abuser. And this is and going off what you just said, it's so important because John is saying right here that it's uh, okay, so for instance, if, if if I am having a bunch of fear in my life about who God mm-hmm. is, it's my misunderstanding. Right. He's very clear to say, you have not been made, made perfect, perfect in, in love. love. You've not matured yeah. to see who God is. Mm-hmm. And that is so important because if, if I'm having fear, if, I, oh gosh, I would go spend time more time mm-hmm. with God, but I feel like he's half mad at me. You need to look at your own self mm-hmm. and say, that is wrong. And say, in the name of Jesus, mm-hmm. I reject that feeling. Yeah. I push against that condemnation mm-hmm. and literally start to see mm-hmm. yourself in Christ and start to say that, Lord, I'm going to start appropriating mm-hmm. what you've done for me. Yeah. I'm not going to allow this this mm-hmm. toxicity yeah. in my heart anymore, I'm going to start resisting it. Yeah. And the, so this is the deal. The way, like you said, that one huge factor we can do that, because if, if you view God, mm-hmm. um, that he's holding out on you, allowing things to happen to you, yeah. causing them to happen to you, you can't trust him, period. Mm-hmm. I mean, no. don't even give me some religious babble yeah. that you do. That's all it you, is, is religious you, babble. You, you won't. Yeah. You can't trust somebody that you mm-hmm. think is hurting you, harming you, or causing problems in mm-hmm. your life. And this is where you begin to change your thinking. As Jesus is, Mm -hmm. so are we in this world. Yeah. Is God or did God do things to Jesus other than the cross, the appointed time where he was taking that wrath for us, for you? Jesus constantly said, my father is pleased in me. My father, yeah. I, do what my father, my, I am my father's. My father loves me. He had such confidence towards his father, didn't he? He didn't yeah. question it. He mm. doesn't question it now. No. He knows who he is. You better liken yourself to the same mm. is what John is saying yes. to us. You have to view yourself mm. the same way that Jesus has a relationship with God is the same way that you should be having a relationship Amen. with God. And Jesus is not afraid of God. Nope. Jesus is not saying God's hurting me. God's just mm-hmm. allowing this. God's just doing this except for the cross, which was different. Mm-hmm. Okay. But other than that, we have to say to ourselves, the, Oh wow. The cross Jesus was the punishment that you were supposed to receive. Yeah. That I was supposed to receive that Rachel was supposed to receive landed on Jesus. Yes. And yeah. that's where our confidence comes from. That's is where it seeing comes from. That, that punishment, that rejection, mm-hmm. that fear we would have. If we were having to live like sinners, just trying to skirt by in front of God, we aren't living like that. Jesus took that. So good. And that's why Jesus, like in Luke chapter six, it says he went up onto a mountain and spent all night in prayer. What was he doing? Was he begging God for forgiveness? No, he had no sin. Was he begging God for relationship? No, him and his father were one. And it says in in, uh, John chapter 17, Jesus said that that they be in me, I in them, them in Mm -hmm. you. He says so that they may be one as we are one. The whole point of like you could just take many cases it says that he separated himself to go out and pray he wasn't doing that to get the favor Mm -hmm. of god he was doing that to actually spend time with his father Mm -hmm. it's amazing yeah and that's when when you remove fear when you wage a war against fear when you start to say that oh i would go spend time but god wait a minute god's not mad at me he loves me. Is God mad at Jesus? No. Nope. No, he's not. So how can you be sure that God's not mad at you? Because yep. you know that as Jesus is, so are you in this world. God is pleased with Jesus. Therefore, yes. you in Christ, God is pleased. God's with pleased you. with you and it drives out fear in yes. your life. Then you have that confidence and that boldness Amen. before him. Amen. All right, you guys, Amen. we That's love so you. You're blessed and we'll see you next see time. See you guys.